This is a deeply personal experience. You gotta look in your surroundings and be like, okay, what is the terroir of this place? What is the soul of this place? The environment that you're cooking has to be inspirational. This is a home, but it's also a chef's artist studio. My process in making food, it's all one for me. The room, the dining room, the chairs, the art, all of it. Beautiful, clear shapes and lines. And I'm excited about the smells that's gonna come from this kitchen. In a couple of weeks, this place will come alive. As a creative, I have to recharge. And this is a place where I can truly do that. I might be the only sweet Ethiopian you will ever meet, but through food, I can share that. We're gonna plan these dishes here and then send them out to the world. I'm Marcus Samuelson, and welcome to My Mark, an intimate look at professional chefs, home lives, and kitchens. This looks delicious. I'm on pancake. Where this one goes? The orange? Yeah. Cooking and being a chef, it's my life, you know? I have my family and then cooking, and I don't see any separation between it. Nice. I mean, making waffles, making pancakes is something that we do very, very often. Kitchen looks great, huh? Yes, I'm very excited about What's your favorite? Cooking. Ethiopian what? food, actually, Marcus. I'm going to cook Ethiopian food for you. Can you imagine all the meals and all the dinner parties we'll have here? It was a lot of fun to create, together with Maya, this not big kitchen, but distinct. It's stunning in its design and the way it performs. Smells so good, Marcus. Right, right? I love that smell. I love how precise the stove is. It's, like, unbelievable. Mashed bananas ready. Good. Pancakes ready, too. Good. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm eight months pregnant. <laughs> I can't, can't be more ready than ready that. Than Let's eat. You promised to make me this every day. So good. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Thank you. <laughs> Getting married with Maya rooted me in Ethiopia. Maya's taught me the Ethiopian alphabet. I was born in Ethiopia, and um, my sister and I, my mother, we had tuberculosis. When I was around two years old, our mom passed away. My sister and I survived. We were saved by a nurse at the hospital that took us in and eventually gave us up for adoption. These dual experiences and identities between Sweden and Ethiopia, something that constantly have been in my life. I went back to Ethiopia in the mid 2000s. I'll never forget when I got to the village. It was just these huts. Seeing the hut that I was born in, both being fearful of that and not quite fully understand how we could survive in that. And, you know, that hut is smaller than two restaurant tables. It was a very emotional day. Anytime you're close to the ocean, there are certain noises, there are certain sounds, there are certain smells that you either have them in your veins or not. This is broken rice. It's smaller because it is so much smaller. It just makes it the whole dish lighter. I've been fortunate enough to live in Harlem for a long time, in West Harlem, where there's a huge West African community. I cooked and traveled all over West Africa. So I've had jollof in many different places. 
You start with your vegetables, you start with your garlics and your chilies and your ginger, and you build up. You saute the rice, you just toast it off a little bit, and adding that liquid in that has a little bit of tomato, onion, chili. You should celebrate the seafood that is here. If it's spring, it could be soft-shelled crab, and if it's fall, it could be more around clams, mussel, lobsters. This dish, it's not a pure jollof, but it's really a beautiful sort of postcard to West African culture. For me, it's also the beauty in nature. There's all natural colors that I want in my restaurant, in my home. All the shapes that I think about are in nature. Cooking is a craft, but it's also an art. And that balance between artistry, look at the design. It's gonna make you more ambitious. <laughs>